we got Otter Coleman and Kelly Hogan. And they are both coming to our meat stock retreat coming up just a little over a month away now. And we got a lot of really awesome special guests, guests coming to that thing in Tennessee. Um, we got two dates back to back, April 26th, to April 30th, and April 30th to May 4th. So we still have a few spots available. I'm super pumped to meet you guys. Well, I met Kelly very briefly, um, but Audra, we have never met before. So No, we have not. Yeah, yeah. So how are you guys feeling about this thing? Are you guys excited to come? Oh, absolutely. And I'd be excited if, for nothing else just to hang out with Audra. <laughs> We've hung out before. She's actually been to my house before. I love her. So it's going to be fun. And I'll be I'm excited to see Scott again. And then there's some people like Dr. Sean Baker that I've never met before. I'm excited. Same thing yeah. with me. There's um, several people. I'm, I'll, I'm always excited to see Kelly and hang out with Kelly for sure. Um, and uh, Courtney Luna and Serena and Dr. Kilt and um, Dr. Sean Baker. Um, I've actually met all them except Serena and I haven't met you in person, Scott, but we've had several zoom calls. I feel like I've met you in person. We've talked so much. Yeah. I feel like I know you guys so well. Um, so I didn't want to talk about the retreat today. That's just, I just had to put that plug in at the beginning. Um, but, uh, I want to talk more about, you know, I think a lot of people I've, I've really tried hard to convince a lot of family and friends to go carnivore over the years. I've seen a lot of great benefits from it. You guys have seen amazing benefits from it. Kelly's been carnivore for longer than anyone I've ever met. And it's it's just amazing. But people are scared, you know, and I get a lot of new people coming to me, and I'm sure you guys do too, that when they're coming to carnivore, they just don't think it's sustainable. They're scared about the health implications. Uh, their doctors and friends and family are telling them that they're crazy and they're going to die of a heart attack, blah, 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 blah. So I would say also one of the main things, and I think all of us have dealt with this, all three of us, are food addictions. We all have been addicted to carbs and sugar. And I think that pretty much goes for 100% of the population. Um, you know, I don't know anyone who's, who isn't, doesn't get addicted to sugar. So I want to ask you guys, um, just to start, was it difficult for you guys transitioning and what sort of helped you in the transition process to go from just a normal American diet to going to carnivore? And, uh, Kelly, maybe we'll just start with you on that one. Well, yeah, it was hard, Scott. <laughs> it's really hard. I, I've been quite addicted to sugar, though I wouldn't have known to describe it that way because it just seemed like that's how everybody ate the problem for me was I didn't look like everybody when I ate the way my brother ate he looked like a normal teenager and I just kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger and my health was also going down so I was in my 20s and I was 260 pounds 262 was the last time I weighed before starting carnivore and I was getting boils, which is like deep seated, almost like um, like an ingrown hair or a zit kind of thing, but on my body. And they were so large and deep and painful that my doctor would have to literally drain them and pack them with gauze. And he said, you, you are really inflamed. So I was desperate. And I think that's the reason some people say, oh, it's too hard. I can't. For me, yes, it was hard, but so was having boils, so was obesity, so was, I had something called costochondritis, which is inflammation of the sternum, very painful. All of those things were hard. So I hear people all the time say, you have to choose your hard, but it was, it was difficult cutting out sugar. I had shaky hands. I was a teacher, elementary school teacher at the time. And the teacher who taught right next to me, she had the one bathroom in our building. And I had to pass by this giant, clear plastic container of animal cookies, animal crackers, but they were cookies. Every time I went to the restroom, oh my gosh, I just shake thinking about them. I wanted them so bad. But yeah, it, for anybody starting out, I would say, yes, you can tell yourself the story of it's too hard. And for a couple of weeks, it's going to probably be difficult. 
but I went through something hard for a couple of weeks and then got rid of the extra 130 pounds, got rid of the boils, got rid of the sternum pain. I had had fertility issues. So we have to sort of choose, choose the hard. Yeah, I think that's brilliant. You know, it's so what what made you what stopped you from giving in into going back to your old ways? Like, you know, yeah, yeah, you're feeling shaky, right? It's it's really hard to get over that hump for some people. What stopped you from giving in? Couple things, straight up vanity being one of them. I really, really wanted to lose weight and it was working. Like it started pretty quickly for me. This is why when somebody does start and nothing changes appearance wise or scale wise for a while, I understand why that would be so frustrating. I did see the scale move and my clothes were fitting a little different. And I was thought, oh my gosh, what if I'm onto something? What if this is it? So vanity and desperation. I really did not want another boil. And I did. I never had another one after that. So there's always like this boogeyman lurking in the closet of you could go back to what you were doing, but ah, boils, you know, like I don't want that to come back. Yeah. So I, I had some motivation right. there. We all have our motivators, right? I think for me, I just had to hit rock bottom. You know, yeah. I just, my health got so bad that I'm just like, I can't do it. I'm going to die. Like I, yeah. I, I can't do this anymore. You know, I think a lot of people have that motivation. What about for you, Audra? How, like what, what, I know you've had quite the health <laughs> journey and I know that weight loss was a big thing for you. What was your main motivator for wanting to go carnivore? Well, I've done every diet known to man. You name it, I've done it. Nutrisystem, Jenny Craig, Weight Watchers. I even had weight loss surgery. Um, and I could always lose weight. I could always lose weight, but keeping it off was the struggle for me. With carnivore, this was a game changer for me. This was the first time in my life I was actually able to not go back to the sugar, not go back to the carbs, not go back to the sweets. I really didn't care about food. For me, For me, it was just sugar. Bring me the biggest, baddest dessert you have on the menu. That's what I wanted. That was my thing. My thing was sugar, and I loved take icing. That was my thing. So I would lose weight and I would do really, really good. And I'd lose 20, 30, 40, 50 pounds. And like Kelly was saying, I'd be like, oh, wow, I look great. I look good. Maybe I can go over here and have a cookie now. And that's all it took just to put one edge of my foot back in the water. And next thing you know, I'm full blown again, weight went back up, fully addicted to sugar. So with carnivore for me, when I first started carnivore, people said, if you'll eliminate the sugar, the cravings will go away. And I said, you think so? Really? Really? I can't imagine ever being that person who did not, who, who doesn't have sugar, sugar cravings and addictions. And they said, but if you will eliminate it, it will go away. I said, you think? So I basically YouTubed a lot of videos, watched all Kelly's videos, Dr. Kim Barry, um, Steak and Butter Gang, watched a lot of videos, started listening to it, started saying, okay, let me do this. And, you know, I fell off the wagon some in the beginning. I'll be honest. You know, in the beginning, it's hard. It's, it, it is an addiction, just like drug, alcohol, cigarettes, any other addiction. Food and sugar are addictions. So in the beginning, I fell off for a while. I had to get back on, you know, dust myself off, get back on the wagon. Well, when I started to finally realize, wow, these cravings are subsiding. Um, I talk about Initially, when I would have cravings for sugar, when I was still standard American diet, it would just be like somebody banging on the door really, really loud. Just bang, 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 bang. And I'd have to answer that addiction. I would have to go get whatever that food was and eat it or I couldn't stand myself. But then after I got into carnivore, I started doing carnivore. I started eliminating the fruits, the vegetables, the sugars, the breads, the carbs and things like that. I started noticing that the, the loud knocking was way less. It was more of a tap on the door. And I could say no, because I was getting all of that junk and all that bad food, processed food, box food, sugar food, you know, bag food out of my system. And the more I got it out of my system, the less the calling was. Um, my mother had dementia. That was kind of my why that made me cry because now they're talking about dementia being type three diabetes. And that scares me watching somebody go through that 
for how many ever years they have it end up being in a nursing facility, that is scary. Now, does does carnivore mean I'm never going to get dementia and never get cancer? No, it does not. But does it lessen my possibilities of being there at some point? I certainly hope so. Um, probably my biggest regret in carnivore is that I didn't start it 10 or 15 years ago. I mean, I literally wish I would have known about this many years ago. Because like I said, I've done every diet and on demand. I would lose weight. But then I would find my way back to the sugar. The sugar would always pull me back in. We talk about it being a lizard brain. It would get back in my head and, you know, I've lost weight. Oh, I look great. Just have one little thing. And the next thing you know, I was full-blown addicted again. So for me, carnivore is, I, I don't ever have to go back to that. And I, it's sustainable for me. I don't have the cravings. I don't have the addiction that I had. I don't have that lizard brain talking to me, eat something sweet. I, I don't have that problem anymore because I do eat meat daily, regularly. And it does get rid of cravings if you do carnivore properly. But each time that you fall off or that you have a setback, then it's kind of, you got to get it out of your body again. You know, it's so therefore I choose not to go back to that anymore. I don't want to go through. I know Kelly's talked about this before. I don't want to go through the detox of it again. I don't want to go through the walking past the animal cookies on the shelf. <laughs> I don't want to go through that anymore. So for me, it's easier to stay over here, stay stable and continue forward. And it's then for me true. in the beginning, the weight loss oh, sorry, was go ahead. great. No, oh, I'm sorry. The weight loss was was a huge component in the beginning for me. But then once I've lost the weight, now I feel like it's about being the healthiest me I can be. And I've seen so many things like the mental clarity is literally worth the weight in gold. In my opinion, the mental clarity, that is my top 10 at the top of the list. I mean, and, and there's so many others, but I feel amazing all the time. And I feel like I'm, I feel mentally clear that my mental clarity is like I'm back in my twenties or my thirties and I just turned 56. Yeah. I, I think that you have, you know, for a lot of people, they have to see some <laughs> results to really keep them motivated. It can be really hard in the beginning. I'm, and look, I'm, I'm not dogmatic. I don't think carnivore is a hundred percent for everyone. Um, some people don't do as well with it for whatever reason, but I think that, um, once you've given enough of a try and, and, and those cravings start to fall off, I, I could tell you guys a, a quick story. So when I first went carnivore, I was addicted to nut butters. It wasn't even the carbs and sugar. I've the strangest craving. I, we all have strange cravings, right? Some people like ice cream. I like nut butters. I was eating like sun butter, peanut butter, uh, you know, almond butter, all this stuff. And when I went carnivore, I couldn't give that up. You know, I go like three days, no nut butters, whatever. I was like, I'd be proud of myself. Oh, I went three days strict carnivore. And then I'd find myself at Trader Joe's eating a whole bucket of sun butter, you know, at nighttime. I don't know why. It was really strange. But it's like, I almost had to sit with the discomfort for a little bit. You know, I had to learn to sit with the discomfort of that nagging lizard brain, like you say, okay, just eat it, eat it, eat it, right? And the longer I would go, the more it would sort of change my brain. It like, the the my thinking patterns would change i'd be like wow i just went five days maybe i don't need the sugar anymore and there's a lot of evidence that shows that you know once you have um you know stopped eating sugar whatever your your gut microbiome changes so a lot of those cravings are actually coming from the bacteria in your gut that are sending signals up to your brain so it's kind of this war between like you could say your lizard brain might be your gut and your brain is your brain. And <laughs> it's this kind of battle back and forth. But what I, I guess, Audra, I should ask you, I, I just want to follow up with that. So what what was the main motivator that stopped you from going back into carb chaos? Um, I realized after having lost the weight multiple times in my life. I don't even know how many, okay? Um, multiple times in my life. <clears throat> it finally came to me, <clears throat> excuse me, the realization that I am not a moderator, okay? I am not a moderator. I cannot eat one cookie and leave the rest. I've got to eat them all and I'm not happy till they're all gone. 
when I realized that I have to be an abstainer for me, that was finally where I was. And all the other diets I've ever done in the past, you know, they never got rid of the carbs, the sugar, the, the, the foods that kept you craving that all the time. I mean, there's so many chemicals in foods nowadays that keep us, keep our brain lit up, keep us craving those foods. And for me to shut that down, shut that noise down, reach over, turn the switch off. It's not a dial. It's a switch. Okay. If you play with that dial all the time, the dial, it'll just keep going. I had to turn the switch off, literally turn it off. And that's what did it for me. It turned off the cravings and I was able to not go back to the sugar cravings with all the other weight loss plans and diets and eating and whatever I tried before, there was still always that calling. You know, you always wanted the the potatoes, the bread, the pasta, the pizza, things of that nature, because there was never a time it was completely out of my body. And once it gets totally out of your body, then you really don't crave it anymore. Or that that's my feeling on it. And I know now looking back, I realize I am not a moderator. I have to be an abstainer. I am I cannot absolutely. moderate sugar. And I don't want to check yeah, I don't want to test it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm two and a half years in and I'm not gonna say, hmm, let me see. Let me go over here and have a cone of ice cream and see what happens. I'm not willing to do that. And I used to would do that. And then I didn't realize then that that would start the whole cycle over again and I would be back in the same position. Now I realize that now that's on the forefront for me. And I know now that there's no need for me to try that. It tastes the same. It's still the same sugar. The same effect is going to happen. I'm going to get addicted again and then I'm going to want it again. And I don't want to go through that again. Yeah. And Kelly, I think we could definitively say that you are an abstainer because I don't, I, from, from what I understand, you uh, have pretty much been strict carnivore for what now, 15 years, 14 years. It'll be not 15 till the fall. Yeah. 14 and a half ish. Yeah. Okay. And that no, no nibbles of the odd keto bomb here and there. Are you, are you, I've never had a keto bomb, but no, there were two instances (laughs) in which I did have some non carnivore foods. The first one was I had some pickles when I was pregnant with my, this week she'll be 13, so my almost 13 year old. And I had some well, peanuts. That's pretty good. <laughs> thank you. I had some peanuts when I was pregnant with Annie, and I got very itchy very quickly in some uncomfortable, odd places. So I was like, all right, peanuts are off the table. That is no good. Um, so for the most part, yes. <laughs> Other than that, I have been carnivore and I don't moderate sugar and carbs i don't even care to try some people have said you but maybe you could now okay maybe i could great i don't miss them why would i i'm not out to prove anything i even heard a carnivore person say if you're still afraid to try carbs you haven't truly healed the root cause issues i'm like okay i don't have to eat a cookie to prove (laughs) that i've healed something root cause I'm happy without them. I'm good. I never well, thought I you would know, be it's, happy it's... without them, but I am. Yeah, I never thought I, I mean, would be happy. Yeah. Yep, I am. I have zero. Well, that's the thing. Try. Why? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. I mean, if you feel great, then what? What's the need to try other things, right? I, right. I, I find myself becoming, a, you know. <clears throat> I don't know if you could, if it's like an addiction, but like I've become addicted to meat, you know, I, I, I I get addicted with the thought of having like a hamburger or like really crispy chicken wings or, you know what I mean? It just, I salivate at the thought of like a dog, but I'm kind of thinking it's like, it's kind of like for a lot of us, it's kind of like going out in the sun. Is there such, is there such thing as getting too much of a good thing? What do you guys think on that? Well, you can get too much of any good thing. You can literally die from too much water, but it doesn't make water a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> Same for the sun. You could be out there till you're crispy and blistered. That's not good. But the sun is amazing for us. As for meat, yeah. the difference between that and processed sugary foods is you stop getting... A, who did describe it this way? I think it was Dr. Chafee. You stop getting the positive feedback loop from foods that are nourishing. 
So you start off with a steak in the first few bites. He was in an interview with a guy. I'm not sure if he was British or Australian. I'm not really good with, <laughs> with uh, accents. I've been told I have one, though. Um, he <laughs> says that there are some foods that are Moorish. And I thought, what is Moorish? He said, the more you eat, the more you want. It's Moorish. Cookies. Moorish. You eat um, a package of cookies and it's like, oh, man, I could go for more sugar. It it, it causes more cravings. He says the first few bites oh, of a dear. steak, the first few bites of a steak are Moorish because you're it's delicious. You're hungry. It's nourished. It's meeting a physical need. Then you hit the wall. You're full. You're done. You don't want another steak when you finish a steak. You're done until you have another physical need. You stop getting the positive feedback. And that's what distinguishes something that is healthy for us versus something that is an unhealthy addiction. It's one thing, of course. Also, you're getting real nutrients from the steak and you're not getting all of this toxic junk that you would from a bunch of Oreos, which apparently help your LDL. <laughs> Did y'all hear that recently? You want to lower your LDL, eat Oreos. Yeah. That Just put it on the list of reasons to not care about LDL and so yeah. anyway, <laughs> that was a side tangent. But yeah, I don't think meat is addictive. I think we must eat or we will die. So we do get hungry and it tastes good. And so we oh, eat it and then so we're good. nourished. Tastes so good. Yeah, but not in the same way of that Moorish feeling. Something to me is very different. It, it allows you to say, oh, that was good. And I'm satisfied. The end. Yeah. I want to talk about some, you know, when I do talk to people and, and they get a little bit worried about starting cardboard, but I'm just curious, we, we need to just keep going with this just a little bit. What are your favorite, what's your favorite meat? Like what, what do you guys look forward to in eating? Well, I love flanking ribs, ribeye. I love chicken thighs, chicken wings. I, oh, I, man. So good. Yeah. Chicken wings for me. How about you, Audra? Um, all the above. I love a really good steak. Um, I love chicken wings. I, I love chicken wings. Um, who can't eat chicken wings? I mean, really. Chicken wings are always good when they're good and crispy and fried up just right in the air oh. fryer. But um, I do a lot of dehydrated meat, too. Kelly can tell you about that. Oh. Um, I do a lot of dehydrated. I do a lot of dehydrated ribeye, a lot of dehydrated brisket. Dehyd I actually get dehydrated. I get fat from the brisket and the ribeye and dehydrate the fat as well. Um, I do a lot of pork loin. I do some dehydrated bacon. And for me, <clears throat> for me, that's kind of a game changer because it helps me to always be prepared. I mean, I can be somewhere <clears throat> and headed back and thinking, I can't wait to get home because I know I got some dehydrated meat ready. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's just, it's really good. Most of the time I take some with me if I travel and, but I do like my dehydrated meat. It keeps me prepared and keeps me on course. Um, because if you get really hungry and you don't have something, you might fall off the wagon. I don't, but I'm just saying if you're early coming on, but to me, there is nothing like just really good steak. Um, and for the record, I want to say, even though I tried every diet and on demand, I've never been vegetarian. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> I can't imagine being vegetarian because I love meat. I did it oh, for yeah. just a little while, but it was a very long 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I actually did try cutting out meat in my 20s, but I really, I'm going to guess, lasted several weeks. Uh, and nothing got better. It's not like I suddenly was like, Wow. I do feel better and I'm losing weight. And so it it didn't last very long. Yeah, I, I tried it for a couple of months. I just ended up getting a few kidney stones out of it. So ah, really yeah, that's it. Wow. Um, but uh, so Kelly, let's talk about the health, health implications. You know, the carnivore diet, you know, according to mainstream media and science is a pretty scary thing to get on. You know, you're going to get heart disease. And we recently saw a study from the American Heart uh, what was it the American Heart Association saying that fasting will give you heart disease and all these crazy myths that you hear out there? Now, Kelly, I I, I don't know if you answered the uh, answer what I said earlier. You've been carnivore for how long exactly now? Fourteen and a half years. Fourteen and a half years. Okay. So, and I know that you've done a lot of testing. Yeah. Have you had any concern about health implications of being strict carnivore? 
And have you seen any, you know, sort of negative health health effects from it? No. The health issues that people have now that have skyrocketed have all happened in the past hundred years when meat eating has declined and processed food eating has increased. The health issues that people are the most concerned about are newer issues that come with newer foods. I have zero concern about eating the food that humans have always eaten. Critters. It's meat. It's one ingredient. Whole food. It's beautiful. No, I have zero concerns. I've had a CAC score done. It is a zero. I keep my triglycerides stay very low. My HDL, which they call good cholesterol, though I don't like calling it that because it implies that the other cholesterol is bad. But HDL has been high. Uh, everything has been good. To me, these studies... Oh, and this whole intermittent fasting causes heart disease thing was just based on a room full of people answering questions about what they ate in the past 48 hours and how often they ate. That's it. It's not even a published study. It's not even published. It was just a survey of how frequently do you eat. So ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yes. Yeah. And I have told people I cannot predict how long I'm going to live. But if I looked at the trajectory of what I was on eating a standard American diet, where there was a point where the boils were so bad, I could barely go up even a few steps. I had a patch of cellulitis on my leg that was hard, hot, and red. That was so painful. Chest pain. Didn't know if I would ever have children. Uh, chronic acne. I was on medication for that. That's in my 20s. Imagine. Now I'm 45. So from my 20s until now, where, and also I was, like I said, 262 pounds. Where would I be by now? What if my cholesterol was lower than it is now, but I still had that life trajectory I was on? Would I trade? That's nuts. I don't care what is on a piece of paper now. And for the record, my doctor, who is trying carnival right now because he was so excited about the results that he's been seeing, he, he is... He has no complaints, no concerns whatsoever for my health. So I don't either. But even if paperwork, it did look like, whoo, those numbers look a little scary. I'll take this life every single time versus where I was headed before. 100%. I would die by the sword being on this diet and and, and risk it. You know what? Maybe in 10 years from now, maybe I will drop it out. The way I feel now doing it, when I am carnivore, it's worth it for me. <laughs> yeah, and um, I, I predict that we are going to have very much longer lives. Like Audra said, it's not a guarantee that you will never have dementia or never have an issue. But I truly think we are giving ourselves the best chance. And some of the people who are the most concerned about carnivore are actually eating the most processed, made up factory foods out there. And they weren't concerned at all when I was eating Pop-Tarts. That's bizarre to me. Isn't that crazy? It you know, is. I had I had Will Harris of White Oak Pastures on the podcast, and he talked to me about the lifespan of his animals that actually live. Because, you know, he, he's he's in that industry, right? He's seen it all. The, the amount of time a cow lives eating a natural diet of just grass, as yeah. opposed to eating grains, is like, it's like triple the amount of time. Yeah. Right. And we see this with the carnivore dogs. Right. I hear now now I'm hearing stories of these dogs that have been eating carnivore, like just straight meat, no kibble, none of the nonsense. Yeah. And they're living to be like 20, 20 something years old, which is awesome. unreal to me. And I'm kind of thinking, I mean, this experiment that we're doing on ourselves a little bit, um, you know, how, how long how long is Kelly going to live for? I mean, are you going to be like 150 years old? You know, you're just going to outlive everyone. Like, I just don't know, right? It's just, it's a total experiment at this point. Um, Audra, how about yourself? What have been the health implications of, of going carnivore? Have we seen any negative uh, side effects from it? And what have been, been the main benefits for you? Okay, so about in 10 years ago, in 2014, I had a family member <clears throat> who had to have a stamp put in at a young age at 39. And it was one of my siblings kind of scared me. So I went and had a CAC score done then. 
my CAC score then was 265 10 years ago in 2014. At that particular time, I had had weight loss surgery, <clears throat> excuse me, and I was nine, I was a month and a year and nine months, I'm sorry, a year and nine months into weight loss surgery, and my CAC score was still 265, okay? I just recently had a CAC score done this year in January, and my CAC score was 16. So everything that you read online, Google, everything that you read says there is no way to lower your CAC score by diet by drugs, by physical activity, by whatever, whatever. It's not possible to lower your CAC score. Well, apparently it is. Like I said, at the time, I was a year and nine months into weight loss surgery. And by the way, when I had weight loss surgery, I gained 25 pounds to make my BMI high enough to have the surgery. And eventually I did lose the weight, but eventually guess what happened? I bet y'all can't guess, right? I found my way back to sugar. And, you know, then then I was back addicted. Weight started coming back up. Then eventually I found carnivore. But um, as far as my blood work goes, my doctor says my blood work's better than it's been in like 20 years. Um, I'm like Kelly. You know, my my cholesterol is it, it's not high. But, you know, it in 19 in the 80s, they said if your cholesterol was above 300, you needed a you, you needed a statin. Okay, in the early 90s, they changed that to being above 200. Now you need a statin. So what does that tell you about where we are in the world? Numbers are just numbers. I mean, you know, like the like when you look at the BMI, you know, your height, your weight. I mean, me, I'm five foot four. I might weigh the, the same as somebody who's five foot nine. But does that mean either one of us are fat or not fat? Or I think we can get very involved in the numbers. And for me, it's how I feel. I mean, I feel good. I no longer have skin tags. I no longer have arthritis. I no longer have joint pain. I no longer have skin tags. Um, I no longer have reflux. I no longer have any kind of brain fog or any cobwebs. My mental clarity, I know I said that earlier, but for me, I mean, my mental clarity is spot on. I mean, the as we start getting in our 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, you start to get brain fog. You start to get cobwebs. And I was starting to get that. And I cannot believe the difference it's made in two and a half years. When I hear people come on carnivore and they say that, I'm like, yeah, I am there. I know what that's like. And you know, they're really in the carnivore space when they can say, my moods have changed. My mental clarity has changed. The way I handle things have changed. Stress levels have changed. People, you know, who were chronically depressed for years, their depression goes away. The anxiety goes away. I hear all these stories. And when I hear all the positive things about people, I just think, yes, this is so amazing. Um, I mean, I know people who are on 18 medications and they have gone, gone carnivore and now they're on no medications. So what does that say? about carnivore you know they can say whatever they want to say about it but the proof is in the people who are talking about their results from it um and as far as the intermittent fasting thing you know years ago we lived man lived on on earth okay we went out we killed a deer we killed a buffalo we ate on that for a few days there may not be something else to kill for a few days so you went without food but you didn't die you know, your, your body is, your body will regulate itself. I'm not saying if you weigh 105 pounds that you should fast for 24, 48, 72 hours, but you're not, you know, it fasting sometimes is good for your body because it gives you time to heal other things going on because it takes so much to digest food. Even if you just fast from six o'clock at night till six o'clock in the morning, you know, and you sleep during that time, your body still gets a break from having to digest so much food. But I, I don't, I'm, I'm like Kelly, that's not an accurate study at all. Yeah, it's, it's so stupid. You know, so I'm, I'm so curious. So D- Kelly, it sounds like you have a pretty smart doctor. I could tell you mine isn't the smartest doctor around. I also did my CAC, which is the uh, coronary uh, artery calcium score scan, whatever, which is supposed to be a great predictive fa- uh, a factor for uh, heart disease. <laughs> And mine was zero, you know, and, and I've been eating fatty meat now for years. You know, I've been carnivore for, uh, what is it? Three and a half years now. Most of the time strict, not, not always, 
Um, Audra, how long have you been carnivore for now? A couple of years? Two and a half years. Two and a half years, yeah. So what what was your doctor's reaction, Audra, when when all this happened? Was he amazed by it? Like did, did he was he asking you questions? Like I'm just curious. Um, basically they just said, you know, hey, your blood look your blood work looks great. Everything looks good. You know, your your numbers look better than they've looked in a long time. Um, it was kind of my idea to do a CAC score because I'd had one 10 years ago. And I'm like, hey, why don't you know? And then it it was being talked about in the carnivore community kind of, hey, what about a CAC score? And I was like, I think that's what I had done 10 years ago. Let's see. And it was. So I said, hey, can we do another one? And they said, sure. So we did. Uh, but they just said, you know, good job. Whatever you're doing, keep it up. And I, you know, I didn't go into a lot of detail because unless your doctor's on board with it, I don't want to be, I don't want somebody trying to convince me to take vitamins, to take supplements, to go on a statin, to eat, you know, 14 cups of vegetables three times a day. I'm being yeah. sarcastic, but because I would not listen. I feel better than I've ever felt. Like I said, I've done everything known to man diet wise. This is sustainable, sustainable for me for life. I have, I don't miss vegetables. I don't miss fruit. And I certainly do not miss sugar. Yeah. Well, I think that sells a score on, on whether high cholesterol is a problem for people, right? I think it, it can be, but when you're carnivore and you have high cholesterol, I have not seen anything that indi has indicated to me that it should be a cause for concern. Um, but that's one last thing I want to touch base on with you guys today is this is the sustainability of a diet. I think that is a huge question. Maybe the number one thing I get asked from people is how the heck can I do this for any length of time? You know, I can maybe do it for a week, you know, but what healing benefits am I going to see from just doing it for, for such a short period of time? And I think that all of us are such a testament, especially Kelly, uh, that you could do carnivore for a long, long time. What, what would you guys say to people that ask you that, that just see as absolutely impossible to have this as a sustainable way of life when people say that to me face to face non-carnivores not part of the community somebody's like wow i can't imagine i have to really tone down my i have to like all right bring it down hogan <laughs> that's what i really want to say is are you kidding me how is this even hard you're literally just eating really tasty food yeah. what i thought was hard was rice cakes running, starving myself, counting points for Weight Watchers, diabetes, obesity, all of that sounds awfully hard. Eating steak and bacon and eggs, that sounds hard. That's what I really want to say. <laughs> and sometimes I do. It depends on the mood. I don't think our ancestors would have found it so hard. And not only that, but I mean, it just saves a lot of time too. You're not making recipes. You're not doing this and that. I mean, it's just such an easy way to eat, you know? Yeah, I would be like, you know, I don't actually have to even go out and hunt and kill it. I, it's literally in the grocery store. I put it in an air fryer. This is not a challenge. Where has the human race gone that we think I drive in my minivan to the store, pick up a beautiful marbled ribeye, stick it in a magical meat drawer, and in eight minutes, I've got a perfectly cooked steak, and this is a challenge? Come on, people. Hold on, what did you call a magical meat drawer? It's the air fryer. You open I love the drawer, that. It just comes out. It's a perfect steak and you eat it. And people think this is a difficult life. No, we have it made in the shade. I eat like royalty. I consider myself the luckiest person alive that I get to eat the like bougiest food ever. It's steak all day long. Come on, this is not a hard diet. This is and hard. you feel good. And you and that's the main thing, right? You feel good. And, and yeah, yeah, I mean, there's so much variety, you know, even if you don't, I, I'll be honest with you. I never, ever get tired of steak. I no. can eat steak or every meal for the rest of my life and be like, cool, I'm good. 100%. That's you know, I, yeah. Otter, what, what, are, what are your thoughts on that? Um, I'm that person, you know, I, I have to, I'm, 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 I'm kind of apparently... <clears throat> I think I'm kidding to Kelly a lot of times because, I mean, we're so passionate about it. I mean, you know, and you want to help everybody. You want to help every person who needs help with it. You know, it's like I tell people all the time, if you know when you go to, <clears throat> excuse me, Costco or Sam's and they give you a sample of something and you try it, wouldn't it be so amazing 
if we could hand somebody something and they ingested it, okay, like drink a little bit of drink or whatever it is, and then they felt the way we do after six months of carnivore for the next two days, do you think those people would get on board? Do you think they would go back to standard American diet? I know they wouldn't. I know they wouldn't. But there's, unfortunately, there's no quick little here, try this little sample. But I'm very passionate about it as well. And people say, how can you just eat meat? Ooh, ooh, what do you mean, ooh? You know, I, I, I eat chicken wings. I eat bacon. I eat eggs. I eat butter. You know, I eat ribeye. I eat fillets. You know, um, I eat fish. You know, I mean, it to me, people just don't understand because they have such strong cravings for those carbs. And that constantly keeps you in limbo of eating carbs and having carb fueled meals where when you no longer have those they no longer talk to you and you no longer want them then the meat is very appealing if somebody would have said to me two and a half years ago you're going to crave hamburger I would have said no nah, probably not and, but I do I do I have cravings for hamburger I have cravings for steak I have cravings for bacon and those are the things that fuel me and that's what makes me crave those things now and as far as simple it's the simplest thing I've ever done I don't you know you don't have to worry about it you don't have to go buy fruits and vegetables and then they sit in the refrigerator on the counter they go bad you throw them away that doesn't happen with meat you cook the meat you eat the meat it's the most simplest thing ever. I can go to any restaurant and eat food anywhere. It To me, it is so simple. It's almost a no-brainer. You really don't even have to think about it or plan the meals. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, let's, uh, we're, we're going to have to wrap things up in a minute, guys. But I want you guys to share, you know, for, for people that are starting off with carnivore, uh, maybe they're just, you know, sort of, curious right now they're just sort of uh investigating if it's right for them or whatever what would be the, sort of the number one piece of advice you give to those people um just try it please don't set so i can say look here's the evidence here's the book here's the study here's the video to watch you can listen to it all who cares right i'm sure a vegan could come on your channel and present some solid evidence as well just try it you know, and see how it feels to your body. And to me, that that should tell you everything you need to know. Um, you know, things like learning to do some deep breaths and breathe through the cravings, go outside, getting vitamin D will help you through the cravings, taking long walks will help you with the addiction aspect. There are some tips at the end of the day. It might be a tough 30 days, but you won't know if it works for you until you give it some time. And 30 days to me is like the minimum. Give it 30 days. See how you feel. Did those cravings start to go away? They did. Okay. Is your A1C or your glucose starting to regulate? Yeah, it is. You looking a little better? Feeling a little better? Yeah, you want more of that? Yeah, you do. Let's give it another 30 days. The, to me, you can read and study and overthink or you can just try it that's it try it no harm to it Audra, what, what are your thoughts i would agree the same thing i would say give it 30 days minimum more like 30 or 60 days clean out your clean out your pantry clean out your cabinets so it's not there so it's not a trigger or you know um, not, you know, so that you don't see it, but give it a heart, give it a try, take some notes. You know, do you wake up in the morning? Do you feel better? Do you feel like you've got mental clarity? Do you feel like you've woke up and you're not bloated or it's hard for you to get up out of the bed? I can tell a huge difference. Carnivore, I'm awake. My feet hit the floor. I feel great. I feel so different. Take notes. You know, how are your moods? Um, do you sleep better? You know, are you doing better as far as physically, mentally, emotionally? See how you start feeling with it. You know, and, and if you don't feel better, then at least you tried it. But I can just about guarantee you that after 30 days of getting rid of the processed carbs, the junk food, the chips, the cookies, the the bags, the boxes, the candy bars, all that kind of stuff. When you take that out of your life, you are going to feel better and you will be amazed at how much better you feel. But like Kelly said, if you don't try, then you won't know. And, and yeah, it is kind of rough in the beginning, especially if you're coming from 
hardcore standard American diet and you're eating whatever, whenever, day in, day out, it's hard to convert over to that because that lizard brain tries to talk to you. Have some more, have some more. Like she was saying, um, cravings come in waves, you know. So if you wait a few minutes, the wave comes in, it crashes. You go find something to do. You walk around, you listen to some music, you know, uh, watch a TV show or something, and the craving will pass. It will pass like a wave. It does come in waves. But unless you try it, you just, you won't really know. But it, it's amazing. It's And people say, how will I know I've arrived? You'll know. You'll know you arrived. You will know what? when the cravings yeah. stop and you feel good and you feel like you, you totally feel like a different person. I mean, Kelly's been doing this for so many years. I'm sure it's hard for you to remember some then because this has been your life for so long. With me, two and a half years, I mean, there's times I go, wow, that I'm not that person I was two and a half years ago. It, it just changes you so much for the better and your health. Every time you, you push through those cravings, it like retrains your brain yes. to be like, okay, I could do this. You know, it gives you that confidence that's like, I don't need to give into the cravings. Right. And then you start to, your brain starts to change over time. That's how, how it worked for me. Here's the most important question of the day for you guys. Okay. Kelly, we're going to start with you. We're stranded on an Island. You only have one choice. Bacon or eggs. <laughs> Oh, bacon or eggs. Well, I guess I make that choice every single morning, actually. I have six eggs every morning for breakfast. Six yeah. eggs. You got the flip going. I love it. I love eggs right now. There are times if you ask me, I'd say bacon. And if I had to do it every day for the rest of my life, maybe I would say bacon. But today, I chose eggs. Okay. And then one more. Air fried chicken wings or hamburger? Oh. Uh. If I had to do it every day for the rest of my life, I think I would go burgers because right. nutritionally and how it makes me feel overall, I think is a little bit superior, I think. But I, you're not, there are no wrong answers here. I love both. Oh, there's definitely wrong answer, Kelly. Uh, no. You're going to be judged in the comments here. Audra, how about you? How about you, bacon or eggs? Um, I would have bacon and I would prefer it crispy. I like crispy bacon. I don't like flimsy bacon. So it'd have to be crispy bacon and I'm in all day. Okay. What about wings or uh, or hamburgers? Um, I'm like Kelly. For me, wings are great. I enjoy wings, but I feel more satisfied with hamburger because there's more fat there. So the hamburger satiates me more so. And there's nothing like a really good, perfectly cooked hamburger patty. Love it. Love it. All right, guys. So uh, before we let you go, I'd love to know where we could find you, get out your social media, what stuff you have going on that people could sign up for. Kelly, how about yourself? On YouTube, it's my my Zero Carb Life. And if people go to myzerocarblife.com, there are also uh, offer eight support groups per week. They are monthly groups, and I'd love to work with people there. Um, so my coaching is YouTube. It's all things alder.com. Well, my website, all things alder.com. YouTube is all things alder.com. Well, I don't guess it's dot com on YouTube, but all things alder on YouTube and then all things alder.com on the website. And I do one coaching class per week. And then I also do private one on one coaching. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, we will see you in just a little over a month at our big carnivore cabin retreat this spring in Tennessee. It's going to be a lot, a lot of fun. Please don't forget to subscribe to the Wire for Healing channel and Kelly and Audra's channels as well. And uh, thanks so much for coming on today, guys. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Scott. Thank you.